Hey everyone, this is a revision video about motion. I hope it will be helpful for you. But before starting the lecture, I would like you to subscribe to my channel Physic Pass. You can also follow my Instagram and Facebook pages to support me. Ok, let's start. We will start with the definitions and the comparison of speed and average speed. Speed is the distance traveled by an object per unit time. But we can use this equation for speed when object is traveling at a constant speed. If a car travels 480 km from A to B in 6 hours, its average speed is 480 km over 6 hours is equal to 80 km per hour. The speedometer will certainly not read 80 km per hour for the whole journey, but might vary considerably from this value. This is why we state the average speed. If a if a car could travel at a constant speed of 80 km per hour for 6 hours, the distance covered will still be 480 km. It's always true that average speed is the ratio of the total distance to the total time. To find the actual speed at any instant, we will need to know the distance moved in a very short interval of time. Ok, now let's compare speed and velocity. The main difference between speed and velocity is that speed is a scalar quantity and velocity is a vector quantity. Speed is the distance traveled by an object per unit time. The distance is a scalar quantity. So the speed is a scalar quantity too. But when we calculate velocity, we use displacement, not distance. Displacement is the distance moved in a stated direction. Displacement is a vector quantity. So the velocity is a vector quantity too. If we use SI unit system, the unit of the distance is meter and the unit of the time is second. So the unit of speed is meters per second. In practice, many other units are used, like kilometers per hour and miles per hour. By the way, don't forget, this is also true for the velocity. We can show the information about the motion of an object in the form of a distance time graph. This graph has three sections. In section 1, the graph slopes up gently, showing that the object was traveling at a low speed. In section 2, the graph becomes steeper. The distance of the object from its starting point is increasing more rapidly. It is moving faster. In section 3, the graph is horizontal. The distance of the object from its starting point is not changing. It is stationary. The slope of the distance time graph tells us how fast the object was moving. The steeper the graph, the faster it was moving, I mean the greater its speed. When the graph becomes horizontal, its slope is zero. This tells us that the object speed was zero in section 3. It was not moving. Ok, so we can have an idea about speed from distance time graph. In fact, the truth is more than this. We can calculate the speed from distance time graph. In this graph, the slope is zero. It means that the distance from the starting point does not change. I mean, the object does not move. In this graph, to calculate the slope, we need a right angle triangle. If we draw this triangle, we can get the tangent of this angle to calculate speed. The ratio of the difference of the uh, y coordinates, 30 meters here, to the difference of the x coordinates, 6 seconds here, uh, gives us the slope of this graph. So the speed of this object is 5 meters per second. This rule is also true for non-uniform speed graphs. When the velocity of the object is changing, the slope of the distance time graph varies, and at any point equals the slope of the tangent. Ok, now let's talk about acceleration. Acceleration is the change of velocity in time, or we can write it uh, in mathematical formula like this. Acceleration is, is equal to change of velocity is divided by time taken for change. For a steady acceleration of velocity from 10 meters per second to 60 meters per second in 5 seconds, uh, so the acceleration is equal to 10 meters per second square. 
If we draw a table for this, uh, as you can see, the speed increases by 10 meters per second, every second, and the acceleration of uh, 10 meters per second square is said to be uniform. Okay, acceleration is a vector, and both its magnitude and direction should be stated. However, at present, we will consider only motion in a straight line, and so the magnitude of the velocity will equal the speed, and the magnitude of the acceleration will equal the change of speed in unit time. One more thing, an acceleration is positive if the velocity increases, and negative if it decreases. A negative acceleration is also called a deceleration or retardation. Okay, just as we can represent the motion of a mo moving object by a distance time graph, we can also represent it by a speed time graph. A speed time graph shows how the object's speed changes as it moves. Now let's interpret this speed time graph together. In section 1, 3 and 7, the object has steady speed, I mean uniform speed. In section 2 and 4, the object is slowing down, I mean decelerating. In section 5, the object is at rest, I mean it is stationary. In section 6, the object is speeding up, I mean accelerating. Ok, now what we can calculate from speed time graph? A speed time graph represents an object's movement. It tells us about how its speed changes. We can use the graph to deduce how far the object moves. Okay. The area under the speed time graph measures the distance traveled. The first figure is the speed time graph for a body moving with a uniform velocity of 30 meters per second. Since distance is equal to average velocity times time, after 12 seconds it will have moved 30 times 12 seconds, it's equal to 360 meters. This is the shaded area under the graph. The second figure is the speed time graph for a body moving with uniform acceleration. At the start of the timing, the velocity is 15 meters per second, but it increases steadily to 30 meters per second after 12 seconds. If the distance covered equals the area under the graph, then distance is equal to area of rectangle and area of triangle. So, uh, it is equal to 15 times 12 plus 15 times 12 uh, is divided by 2 and it's equal to 270 meters. This is the distance. Okay, this rule for finding distance traveled is true even if the acceleration is not uniform, as you see from the graph. Uh, the speed is changing, it's increasing not uniformly, non-uniform acceleration we have. Again, if you can calculate the area under the graph, so you can get the distance. Ok, we can also find the acceleration of an object by calculating the gradient of its speed time graph. In this figure, the slope of the graph is zero. It means that the acceleration is zero, so the speed does not change. This figure is the speed time graph for a body moving with uniform acceleration. At the start of the timing, the velocity is 30 meters per second, but it increases steadily to 90 meters per second after 12 seconds. In this graph, to calculate the slope, we need a right angle triangle. If we draw this triangle, we can get the tangent of this angle to calculate acceleration. The ratio of the difference of the y coordinates, 60 meters per second here, to the difference of the x coordinates, 12 seconds here, gives us the slope of this graph. So the acceleration of this object is 5 meters per second square. This mathematics is also true for the objects which are slowing down, but this time you must be careful about the negative slope. Because of the deceleration, in this situation, acceleration is negative. You can convince yourself mathematically. Just think about the last speed, I mean 30 here, and the initial speed, 
90 here the difference is negative so the acceleration is negative when the acceleration of the object is changing the slope of the speed time graph varies and at any point occurs the slope of the tangent okay now we will talk about the motion of falling bodies in a uniform gravitational field with uh, out, uh, without or air resistance or with air resistance Without a resistance, the only force acting on that object is just its weight. The acceleration caused by the pull of the Earth's gravity is called the acceleration of free fall. Thus, this quantity is given the symbol G, and its value is 10 meters per second square, close to the surface of the Earth. As you can see from the graph, if for every second, its speed increasing 10. So it's it's. It, this is acceleration of it, 10 meters per second square. But if there is a resistance force, the weight of the object will not be the only force acting on the object. Thus, the acceleration of falling will less than the acceleration of gravity. At the beginning of the falling, the air resistance force has not a great magnitude, but it is directly proportional with the velocity. The greater velocity, the greater air resistance force. At a certain moment, the weight and the air resistance force will be equal. After this time, the object will not speed up, because as we will learn later, the net force acting on the object is zero, so the acceleration is zero. This, vel uh, this velocity called terminal velocity. You can see this story on the graph. Okay, this is the end of the chapter two, the motion. I hope this revision video will be helpful for you. See you on next video. Bye.